Now is a defining moment for the anarchy of sand grains. They begin to assemble on the lee side of desert shrubs, forming serried ranks of small hummock dunes. Steadily building and merging, the growing mounds of sand transform into crescent-shaped barken dunes. With their backs to the wind, the barkens are, ever so slowly, being steered northwards skating across the surface of a petrified desert which existed here 15 million years ago. And these mobile dunes swallow everything in their path. The giant crescents create their own special wind pattern of eddies. Fragments of dead plants, animals and seeds blown here from more fertile regions are trapped in swirling vortices. These remains are recycled by huge numbers of tenebrionid beetles. Some 200 different species exploit the Namibian dunes. These beetles are unable to fly as their wing cases are fused and covered by a waxy bloom. It's a way of helping them to retain the meager but critical amounts of moisture gathered from their food. Here, where there are no rocks, bushes, or trees as hiding places, it's vital to have strong senses. The shovel-snouted lizard relies on sharp sight and hearing. Even its feet can detect the vibrations of approaching predators. Peringue's adder, beautifully adapted to life on the dunes, its side-widening motion means it can comfortably get around. But on the steep face of a barken, nothing's easy. In such a barren place, the adder has no choice but to settle out in the open. It's perfectly camouflaged. Everything about this animal matches the sand, even the color of its eyes. To attract its prey, the adder waggles its tail, mimicking an insect in distress. This time the lizard is too fast. 